I'm able today to release to the American people uh, the FBI document that we go by the number 1023 that has some information that the American people might know about some shenanigans that Vice President Biden and Hunter Biden may have been involved in. Well, it has finally been made public, the long-awaited unclassified FBI 1023 form that alleges then-Vice President Joe Biden was involved in a bribery scheme with a foreign national has been made public for the world to see by Senator Chuck Grassley. This form dates back to June 2020, which details conversations between Ukrainian executives from gas company Brisma Holdings and the FBI's informant. The confidential human source has been a trusted informant for the Bureau for over 10 years and describes meetings and conversations he had with people from Brisma Holdings dating back to 2015. This reporting from the source has dropped bombshell details about Joe Biden and Hunter Biden receiving money from Brisma Holdings in exchange for dealing with certain things that would hinder the Ukrainian company from doing business in the US oil sector. Let's go through some of it. In late 2015 or 2016, the human source travelled to Burisma's office in Ukraine with a Ukrainian man named Alexander Oskopenko, who works in the office of President Zelensky and for a founder of a cryptocurrency business. These two were going to meet with executives to discuss the company's interest in purchasing a US-based oil and gas company. The idea was to merge a US company with Burisma for about $20 to $30 million in order to register for an IPO in the US. At the meeting, Burisma's CFO asked the human source if he was aware of the company's board members, to which he replied no. The CFO listed that the former president or prime minister of Poland was one, and that Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, was also on the board. Hunter Biden did sit on this board between 2014 and 2019. The former leader of Poland was used for his contacts in Europe for potential oil and gas deals, and Hunter Biden was used to protect Burisma through his dad from all kinds of problems. Keep in mind, this is at a time when Joe Biden was serving as the Vice President of the United States under the Obama administration. The source then asked why they needed his help to get this merger off the ground when Hunter Biden was there to provide insight. To which the CFO replied that Hunter Biden was not smart and they needed additional counsel. Two months later, the informant travelled to Austria with Alexander Ostapenko to meet with Mikola Zlachevsky, who co-founded Burisma Holdings in 2002. The three of them discussed buying a US-based oil entity, which according to the informant, was around the same time Joe Biden had publicly stated the Ukrainian prosecutor Viktor Shokin was corrupt and that the government should fire him. Mr Shokin was actually investigating Burisma Holdings at the time. This prompted the informant to tell Mr Zlachevsky that while Burisma is being investigated by Viktor Shokin, it would have a negative impact on the company's chances of gaining an IPO in the US. But according to the co-founder of Burisma, this wouldn't be a problem because Hunter Biden was taking care of it. He said, don't worry, Hunter will take care of all of those issues through his dad. As we know, Joe Biden as VP in April 2016 got Viktor Shokin booted from his prosecutor job by threatening the Ukrainian government to withhold $1 billion in foreign aid. The conversation continues where the three discuss the fact that it could be cheaper to form a new US entity rather than merge the existing Burisma with an already listed US company. Mikola Zlachevsky says Hunter Biden advised that Burisma could raise more capital with a large US-based business that had a history with the oil and gas sector. But during this time, Burisma Holdings was still under investigation by Viktor Shokin, which the informant said could be problematic to potential shareholders if the company was under a criminal probe. Zlachevsky laughed off the thought of hiring an attorney for $50,000 should Burisma enter a litigation in Ukraine, which they'd likely lose. The co-founder then laughed at the number five because it costs $5 million to pay one Biden and $5 million to another Biden. The confidential human source told Mikola Zlachevsky that paying the Bidens would complicate matters and that Burisma should just hire some normal US oil and gas advisors as Joe nor Hunter have experience in the sector. Zlachevsky said although Hunter Biden was stupid and that his dog was smarter, he needed Hunter Biden on Burisma's board so everything will be okay. The source questioned whether Hunter Biden or Joe Biden told him that he should retain on the board, to which he said they both did. But the informant pressed the situation, telling Mr Zlachevsky that he should fire Hunter Biden and deal with Viktor Shokin's investigation into Burisma directly so that the matter stays within Ukraine and doesn't trickle into an international problem. He responded, don't worry, this thing will go away anyway. 
The informant advised the Burisma founder to not spend millions of dollars buying a US business and that he himself didn't want to be involved with the Bidens, to which Lachevsky said it's too late to change his decision. The FBI informant understood that response to mean that he'd already paid the Bidens to deal with Shokin. Jumping ahead to after the 2016 election where Donald Trump had won, Mikola Zachevsky told the informant that he wasn't happy with that outcome. The human source asked Lachevsky whether he was concerned about his involvement with the Bidens now that Trump had gained office. He responded, he didn't want to pay the Bidens and he was pushed to pay them, explaining the Bidens had received it and he was forced or coerced to pay. Victor Shokin had been fired as a prosecutor by this point under VP Biden's pressuring as Lachevsky said nobody would find out about his financial deals with the family. The informant said, I hope you have some backup or proof for your words that would prove the Bidens coerced him to make those payments. Slachevsky replied he has many text messages and recordings that would prove that. According to the FBI's 1023 document, the trusted informant had no further contact with anyone from Burisma Holdings until three years later in 2019. At a coffee house in London, the informant met with Alexander Ostapenko, where they called Mikola Zlachevsky, who was living somewhere in Europe. Zlachevsky asked the two if they were up to date with recent reports about the Bidens and Burisma. The informant told Zlachevsky that he might have trouble explaining suspicious transactions to the Bidens if that would have to occur. Zlachevsky responded he did not send any funds directly to the big guy, being Joe Biden, and that it would take 10 years for investigators to find the records of these payments. Within the document, the informant details that this information these businessmen offered up to him was relatively normal, as it's common for those post-Soviet countries to brag or show off in their corporate deals. In June 2020, the FBI's informant provided further reporting on Zlachevsky's comments about keeping proof of conversations with the Bidens. He has many text messages and recordings that show he was coerced to make such payments. CHS clarified, Zlachevsky said he had a total of 17 recordings involving the Bidens. Two of the recordings included Joe Biden and the remaining 15 recordings only included Hunter Biden. The source confirms these recordings and two bank statements, according to Zlachevsky, are evidence that he was coerced to pay the Bidens to ensure that Viktor Shokin was fired. So all in all, what this document alleges is that the FBI's informant met with both the CFO and co-founder of Brisma Holdings, who both detail working with Joe and Hunter Biden. Yesterday, two whistleblowers from the IRS made bombshell testimonies before the House Oversight Committee. Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler have worked with the federal tax agency each for over 10 years and both detailed why they thought this investigation into Hunter Biden's taxes was handled improperly. The two faced question after question from both sides of Congress about their allegations the DOJ interfered with their probe, that they were stymied, that they were left out of reviewing key evidence, and that at all times of the investigation, the subject always benefited. Despite the fact that Gary Shapley was investigating payments made to Hunter Biden from Burisma Holdings, payments that Hunter Biden did not declare to the IRS, he and his team were not given access to this FBI document. Mr. Chapley was asked in the hearing what he would have done if he was actually given access. Since I've never seen the document, I only know what's been reported. Right. So I'll, I can say that there were investigative steps that, that, that uh, involved uh, President Biden that were not allowed to be taken and that uh, information like this would have been uh, 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 really helpful to have from investigators. Uh, uh, by investigators when uh, when we received any pushback, when we were, when we were asked to, to take names out of document requests or search warrants, um, it would have been, it would have been nice to have information that sh uh, that that showed why that helped prove why they, those names needed to be in those requests.